Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to the 140 session. Next up, we have Sushil Kulkarni, Engineering Manager at Red Hat, and Anis Laughalam, sorry for the mispronunciation, who's a software engineer at Red Hat. So they're going to be talking about catching network regressions using LNSTs. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so uh, I think I know some people in the audience, but uh, how many people are involved in networking development? No, no. How about CI/CD? Like exposed to CI/CD a little bit? Probably not. Okay, so this one is basically um, going to walk you through a tool called LNST, a framework called LNST that we've developed. Um, and I work in the networking group in the at Red Hat, and so does Anis and um, basically show you how this, what this framework does and give examples. So, um, so here's like an agenda. Uh, I'll basically first talk about why we did this uh, framework LNST, and why it was required for us in the networking team. Um, and then we'll also talk about leading to that, what is LNST and what, what it's capable of doing. And then we'll give you an example of how you can set up a test or a topology using LNST. Um, we'll show you how how it reports uh, results and that you can interpret and use for your catching regressions. And um, in the end, I'll just tell you what's going on, what's coming up in the future for LNST. So, um, so a few um, some time ago, there was an engineer in the networking group, and he. He started writing regression tests for bonding, um, and then he soon found out that he had to redo a lot of things when he had to start testing teaming, for example, because it's kind of similar technologies. So, uh, so that's where the need for like a framework kind of arose, where uh, it would be important to have like a universal framework for running networking tests that could be easily extendable um, and it could be like really consistent so that you can run them over releases or over cycles of nightlies and then kind of compare results and see like you know if, if there was a regression somebody introduced a regression um, um, it was also important to also ex make it easily extendable because um, you didn't want something which is tight you could do scripting but it's really not um, extendable. So we wanted a, f a framework where people could add new functionality into it and run it and so that you could get newer and newer topologies as people added more and more features or more and more uh, functional items. Um, and, and there's something called test recipes which Anis will talk about in a little bit, but uh, we also want it to be like um, something that you could describe uh, your topology in and then so that the, this this framework could run the topology and create the topology for you and run the test. Um, the reference to CI/CD was another thing where we found out that um, at some point we found a, a bug that we could have caught it really early in the cycle of the development. And and if we had something that would, we could test at a developer level, for example, um, then. That would be great so that the person, the, the developer could run it, the tests and catch in regressions, or the LNSC team at Red Hat could also run it uh, and test and catch regressions much before then maybe towards the really end of the release. So, so that was also, so these are some of the reasons why um, this framework came into being. Um, so the original engineer at Red Hat, he started this, as Jiri Perko, he started this um, framework and then there's, there's a team at Red Hat that works and this whole thing is upstream and the front page had the Git repo on it so you can go up and look at it and see how you can do things like that. Um, so I'll hand it over to Anis. He's going to run through a lot more than me. Uh, and he's going to talk about it. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I've been with Red Hat for uh, oh, a little bit over four years and I've been using LNST since, uh, since then. Um, what is LNST? It's a, an abstraction a collection of programs that uh, uh, help developers uh, uh, to ease their work. Um, it's a tool written in Python uh, that has a set of tools and uh, definitions uh, that make, that make the, the workload of the developer uh, easier. Uh, it is uh, an automated testing uh, 
we, you know, developers, as uh, Sushil mentioned, when the uh, Jerry Pirko was trying to do teaming and bonding, he has to do a lot of stuff. So automation helps in this in this way, helps eliminating the human error or human factor by using the same commands in a sequence, sequential order over and over uh, to keep the test uh, steady. Uh, portability, um, you write it once and the, the idea is to use it multiple times. It's not depending on any hardware or special hardware. Uh, could be the hardware that you tested on could be used by another developer, for example, and you need another hardware. You just uh, uh, use the same uh, uh, test again. The fact that it is um, abstract, uh, portable, uh, extendable, make it really easy to use and save time for uh, uh, redoing uh, tests over and over, or, or configuring tests over. Is this working? So, uh, what can LNST do for you? Um, it, it helps you uh, set up your, your, your environment faster and easier. Um, and when I say uh, it could be used by developers, it could be used by hardware guys, firmware guys, um, it, and you can test different topologies on the fly. It has a library of tests pre-designed, pre-configured, and you can just pick what, what uh, test you would like to, is it bonding, teaming, is it uh, virtual, uh, guest to guest, uh, it has different and multiple variety uh, of tests. Uh, you can test the functionality, you can test the throughput, uh, uh, you can use other uh, add-on, IPsec, MacSec, uh, it's, it's very extendable. Uh, has a has a feature where you do, there is, in your lab you should have a, a pool of machines and basically you tell LNST what I want to test and LNST will go check that pool and see what configuration is good for you and use that those uh, set of machines. Um, it logs tests uh, with timestamp uh, for debugging in case you catch anything or you see something that uh, uh, annoys you. You can always go to logs and it has very detailed uh, logs. And the most important thing, it cleans after itself. Uh, once you run it, it goes, uh, set up the environment, do the tests, and once it's done, it flashes the, the next and return them to their the original uh, state. This is a, a really uh, just a simple uh, overview. Uh, this is how it's gonna look. Uh, in our tests, we use Beaker. It's an open source program that goes and controls the systems for us, provisioning what kind of OS I would like to use. Uh, it's uh, pluggable into Jenkins, which is also an automated uh, framework that, uh, let's say you build a, a kernel, it will kick in, Jenkins will tell Beaker, okay, the build is ready, uh, go install these machines with this kernel, Beaker will go to the machines and uh, install them for you. Once it's done, it will kick uh, the LNST test. Uh, this blue line and this green line are totally different networks. This is the controlling or how you SSH or how you VNC to your uh, systems. The green uh, network is where, where your test is going to be, your, your pings or your uh, or your uh, iperf, netperf, whatever, whatever throughput tool that you will be using. Uh, so how is LNST sets uh, itself up um, in a chronological order? Uh, for uh, uh, sake of time, we will assume that we have two systems um, that have already OS installed in them, which is Linux. And um, um, 
and I have access to these machines through a, uh, a NIC that is not on this uh, design. I can SSH to them. I can install whatever I want, like RPMs, all that stuff. And these two NICs are the one that I'm going to be testing, either for uh, after an upgrade, driver upgrade, or uh, a kernel upgrade, or firmware. That's this. Then I'll install NLST on one of the machines. They have uh, uh, slaves. You can install them through DNF install LNST slave. And you only need one controller. This controller, you could, you could be on your laptop, you could be on your desktop, or you could be on one of the test machines. Um, once you click the LNST, it will go and find those two uh, NICs that you are trying to test. In this case, it's going to be a bond. And it will configure it with uh, uh, two slaves with a bond given an IP address uh, to your cho of your choice. And after that, it will run traffic. Uh, is it, whether it's a ping or is it a throughput performance. Next, please. And at the end, it cleans itself. After it logs, it reports back to you. It's fresh, uh, fresh machines that can for, for a new test if you want. This is the, as simple as it can get. Um, I'm, we're going to go through how it gets, the LNST was built. Um, two machines with LNST and slave installed on them. Uh, the controller OS is installed. And this is the final uh, test, or the final look of my test that I want to test, this connection right here, either for functionality or for throughput. Um, how does LNST know this? By, by, we call it recipe. Recipe is, is uh, an XML that has uh, attributes, and you tell what machines you, uh, you're going to be using. Machine one is one is also supposed to be a machine that XML in uh, your directory or your LNST pool where all the machines that LNST knows about and uh, you know, has the MAC address and has the host name or um, and. It, for, my, for this case, we picked uh, machine one, has one NIC, and uh, this is the IP that I'll be using. In the same XML, there is machine two, and these three dots are there. It's just like copy-paste of the same, just for the sake of space, with the, with the different, with the, the two. LNST will read this XML, and find there is a, you want this task. It will go into the same directory, look for it, Right here, this is as simple as it can get. Um, imports uh, uh, modules, libraries, sign a, a variable, and it will run this command, ping one from this IP to this IP. How do you run it? Just this command, LNST, call, control, run, recipe.xml. And as I said, there is a variety of, of options, what recipe, and uh, they're, it's, they are all upstreams and accessible. Uh, yeah, just showing the example back. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, next one, please. This is another example. Uh, I want to test bonding versus uh, a nick, bare metal nick. Um, same, same thing, like I did not change the EOS, I did not remove this, so I'm done with NIC to NIC. This is my second test I want to test. I can just do lnst.cuddle run the recipe that has the bounding in it, and it will uh, do the same. The next page, please. That XML for the bounding, it's, it's one single XML, it just split. Same thing, has machine one, has two NICs in it. And uh, the driver for the NICs, in case the machine has more than one NIC with different drivers, I can specify the driver to test. And uh, the bond, the name is bond zero. Uh, the type of it is active backup. It will enslave a TH1 and TH2. And it will assign IP address IPv4 or IPv6 uh, or both at the same time. And machine two is similar to machine one from the previous XML. And uh, once it reaches this Python task, it will go to it. It's a more complicated uh, Python code than the simple network or that, uh, the ping that we just showed earlier. 
and it's available online on uh, I will at the end I will post the the git where you can find all the recipes and the XMLs that we use that the Python also next one please yeah, so essentially just to complete yep. Anissa's thought, we're, you can see how this recipe is actually defining the topology that, that you really want to test. So you can customize your topology to what you want, and, and provided there are these libraries that will run the test for you, that's perfect, you can just run it. If there isn't, then uh, we have to add, either add a new library or modify an existing library to do this. This is a more complex setup. Um, again, two systems with OS on them. Um, each system has uh, two guests, VM1, VM2, VM3, VM4, has an OpenV switch uh, running the networking internally. Uh, one controller, and if you notice, there is a slave running on this host, slave on the second host, slave on each VM. Those slaves are listening for instructions from the controller to what to do, configure what type of topology or what, what, what IP I'm testing, IPv4, IPv6. So the controller will submit uh, the instructions and the slaves will just execute. Um, in our case, we're gonna test uh, functionality tests, either ping, for example, between VM1 on this host to VM3. ETH0 on each VM is the controller. This is how I can SSH to this machine. ETH1 is the, the NIC that I'm B-testing. This slave will configure the ETH1 with the VLAN 10, and this slave will attach ETH1 to the switch, the uh, physical NICs to the switch with the bonding with an IP address here also. Same thing, uh, mirror will be done on this. Then, P, then VM1 will try to ping VM3, and uh, everything, the results will be in the log. It will also ping a VM1, it will ping VM4, which is on a different VLAN, just to see if it uh, passes or not. Uh, in the past, we caught, uh, we caught a regression where the VLAN was crossing border, uh, crossing the VLAN ID tag. And it's important to note that it's not just ping, you can run any traffic generator you want. It's, you can extend it to whatever, iperf, netperf, or we have, we're also thinking about using another in-house built traffic generator than we have, so. Yeah, so essentially we're running traffic to see if there's regression in, in the kernel network. So how does LNST report? If it's a pass, you will get a nice looking uh, uh, detailed uh, report with a pass and the summary at the end if you want to skip the, debug the debugging part uh, as a pass. If it fail, it could fail for any reason, uh, but we care about the functional failures. Uh, if it, for example, the, the ping didn't pass, uh, it will tell you that it failed. Oh. You can tell the pass. Uh, the pass here, for example, in our test, we test the performance as well, not just the functionality. Um, this test was a result of it was uh, uh, using the network was 9.4, and it passes because it, it was at base the baseline, and the baseline uh, is not just a, a, an, arbitrary, an arbitrary number, but it was uh, decided based on multiple runs uh, and making sure that that this version is stable and. We average it. In each run in our LNST, we don't run it network just one time, it's five time and average it. Um, and then we'll talk more on the, the failures. If, if it fails for the throughput reason, this one was less than this baseline, uh, it tells you. And the second failure is, for example, the, devi the standard deviation allowed in our test is uh, has to be within 20% of the measured throughput. And uh, next slide will be a more visual uh, uh, idea about how the deviation failure is. In our tests, we rely on an open source project called PerfRepo, which is a, a database that, uh, since we care about performance as well, we have to store the data and compare it to a baseline. This baseline, the one I, I spoke before, is this green line. And uh, this Perfrepo has a web UI interface that makes life a little bit easier. 
The y-axis is the throughput in uh, gigabits per second. The x-axis is uh, the runs. Each each uh, natural number means there is a run that there was a kernel here that we run, and this was the result. The, the the orange line is the average throughput, minimum throughput, maximum throughput, and the space between is the deviation. How? Um, the, how the runs, the, the data that we collected from the runs, how scattered were before between the max and the minimum is this space. So if the space is 20% of the uh, average throughput, that means there is a failure. Like the numbers are not reliable. This one is a nice run. Same, same machines, same um, uh, tests. No, I wouldn't say same test, but it's a different test with a different protocol. This is a nice looking graph where the baseline after we tested it, uh, we decided, okay, this is how much we're gonna be. And every time it's passed, this is kind of the look. Now, this is an example of uh, how early regression testing can be helpful. Uh, we run here uh, kernel versions during development cycle. If you can see here, all the threes are several times we run this test, then we decided, okay, the baseline, let's agree on this baseline right here was this point, for example, and uh, this data line is our baseline. Then after that, every time we test, if it fails, we go and debug and see what it fails. Here, it's a clear regression uh, that starting this, this kernel right here, it was a regression, and the, the bug was filed, and the developers are working on it. So I, that's how LNST make it easy for us to just uh, automate it and run it. And uh, I'll hand it to Sushi. Okay, um, so, um, so what's next uh, coming up? So um, if you saw the recipes were XML based before, um, that has a set of limitations where it's not very, it's not very flexible, and some of the more complex topologies is difficult to implement or provide a recipe for. So um, the the next thing that's actually underway currently is is converting all these things into adding support for Python rep based recipes, and which also means we have to convert our existing recipes into Python recipes. So that's one of the things that's going on. Um, like I said, there were different type of traffic backends that you can put in, like like Hyperf, Netperf, and there's another one which we're trying to use called Rashid, which is again a uh, traffic generator that we built inside the networking team, and that's also upstream. So we're trying to integrate that as well. Um, of course, there's work happening on the next branch. There's uh, conversion from Python 2 to Python 3 because Python 2 is going to be deprecated, I believe, so in a couple of years. So that conversion is happening. Um, there are other uh, supporting things that are not specific to LNST, but something that's, if you remember that package that uh, Nis showed about Beaker, Jenkins, um, there's something else that we've added, which is um, sometimes we see setup issues where you might get false positives. So we've run, created these bots which will rerun the test again just to make sure we've really caught a regression. So um, so we might integrate into LNST, we're not sure, but there's something that we're running on the side. So it runs it again, we do a come out, we, do three passes. So basically, if we have a majority pass, then we know it's like a setup glitch. We mark it as something that we need to go look, and we fix if there's a test setup issue or a test recipe issue or a test case issue. Um, so we also want to bisect it so that if once a regression is found, we want to be able to go back and tell exactly which commit it was that caused this problem. So that's another bot that we're working on so that we can go tell the developer, find and say, look, this is where you start a regression. Please fix it. So that that's kind of something that that's happening as well, and of course more topologies. Networking you have so many topologies, so we're adding more and more tests as people add more functionalities in the Linux kernel. Uh, we we also add recipes and tests for that. So that's another thing that's uh, continually ongoing. Um, so uh, finally, uh, credits uh, like the engineer who started this project, Jiri uh, Perko. He he's kind of the founder of it and. Andre Lechner is is uh, is the maintainer, and Jan, Luca, and Anis, and all these guys they work in the LNST team as well. So um, this is the uh, uh, place where you can go get the code. You can and and we're, 
if you want to contribute to writing tests or uh, if you want to reach out uh, for any questions, um, we are also on IRC that I put in the, it's in the beginning of the um, slide deck here. Um, I'll bring it up. Yeah, um, so we are on free note at this point. So reach out if you need any help uh, with any of your tests. So um, at this point, I'll, we'll take questions if there are any. Uh, thank you for the information. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to know uh, if uh, this LNSG uh, does test for things like TPDK, SRIOV? Yeah, yeah, we have added the, the world is underway. We are adding TPDK and OVS as well. Okay, uh, so like uh, for, for DPDK, uh, I mean, uh, like what, what kind of, uh, uh, you know, traffic generator uh, that is using like test PMD or something like that? Uh, the traffic generator, I think it was Moongen, I believe. Okay. Um, it was Moongen or Zestar, I think. Okay. Yeah, so uh, the other one, which is uh, Cisco, I don't know which one is it. So one of them is being used. T-Rex. Yeah, T-Rex, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep, thanks. Any more questions? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you.